Alright, welcome everyone to Smart Guys for August 3rd, 2013. I'm Darkside Phil, and with me, as always, is the great John Rambo. Are you Darkside Phil? Are you sure? Hmm. Are you sure you're true Darkside Phil? I could Phil? be Brightside Bill. <laughs> Sometimes I get confused. Brightside Bill. <laughs> All right, everyone, so welcome to Smart Guys. Uh, first one in two weeks, we had a little bye week there. Uh, the build-up. The build-up is coming to a head for SummerSlam in the WWE. And TNA, despite having consistently good wrestling, went a little bit off the rails this week. A lot of people had issue with TNA and the things that they did this week. Yeah, like a, this, this week shows a perfect example of what TNA is and has been, pretty much has been. If someone said, what is TNA, I would show them this show. I guess we'll explain that in more detail later, but that's right. how I look at it completely. So. All right, so also this week with WWE, we had the premiere of a show. A show with yeah. John, John Rambo has now told me is his his greatest show of all time. He, he just cannot wait to see the next one. It was one. an unbelievable experience. <laughs> <laughs> it was surreal. I, I actually think you should have watched it. because Oh, my God. I, don't, I was afraid to, man. I was afraid to watch I have it. Many, I've drawn many conclusions from watching this. It's opened my eyes to many things. And I think the show is actually more important in their eyes. Right. Than any of us have, have imagined and thought. Hmm. Okay. Yes. So the name of the show is Total Divas. We're starting with that. Well, it's the first thing that happened this week, so we're going to talk about it. Okay. The name of the show is Total Divas. It airs on the E Network on Sundays, I think. Sunday I night. It was on all week. That's all. Like I, That's all they played all week. Yeah. Like it was. I saw it randomly on like a. What was it like? Maybe Wednesday or something. And like the middle of the day. Yeah. And uh, that's what I was able to watch. Well, they announced, and you know, of course, on all on WWE TV, they have to stroke their own dick. So they're like, it's the biggest premiere ever on E. I was like, what? The, what the fuck cares? ever premiered on E? You know, like it's not a big accomplishment on a network that no one watches to have the biggest show well, the, premiere. The show's disgusting. It's a, it's an atrocious abomination. <laughs> like mo I guess most of the stuff they have on there. I mean, it's 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 really great. You feel like disgusting. It's supposed to be reality? Is it really no, reality? It's completely scripted. Completely you staged. Know. Yes. All right. So, I guess the show follows the Bella Twins, but also Natalia and also the Funkadactyls. Yeah, the Funkadactyls, these two new <clears throat> divas, I think they just put on the show. I don't think they're actually divas. Yeah, because they're not doing anything on WWE uh, TV. And uh, John Cena and Daniel Bryan are uh, prevalent on the show because they're dating the Bellas. Right. They're like the main characters and of it's the a, show outside of the women. It's completely scripted. There's, there's your heels, there's your faces, there's uh, storylines that play out that that you could tell her storylines if you watch the main shows because you know the stuff you're talking about doesn't make sense. Right. And it takes it takes place around WrestleMania, right before WrestleMania and in, in, in through WrestleMania. Right, right, right. And uh, there's, there's a storyline with Natalia where she's supposed to supposedly has a match at WrestleMania. <laughs> which she didn't. Which, you know. She the, never did. The card was out there like months before. <laughs> the card and the results for the show existed like <laughs> six months before the show happened. <laughs> And um, that never really, you know. And then they, they tell her she, you're not going to have a match, and uh, she's like she's like broken down ooh, about ooh, it. Ooh. And she rips the company a little bit. Going to have a match? Which you can't do publicly. You'll be fired. Right. So they're she's playing a character there. Right, right, right. Uh, the Bellas are all over the place. They're they're <laughs> they're they're pretty much like the main thing on the show. Uh, they have these two new divas, and the storyline is one of them looks like a Bella. So the Bellas, like, complain about they this. They hate her. They hate her. The Bellas are playing <laughs> up like they're heels, right? That's like they're, they're doing their character on this on this reality show. Right. So uh, they don't like this one because she looks like a Bella, so they complain about it. Management tells this new person to dye their hair blonde. She refuses. Like, you could actually do that in the WWE. I think it was Kazarian um, way back. He, he, they told him to cut his hair, and he wouldn't. He, he huh. like, uh, with all kinds of different stories about it. You know, they tell you change your name. This is who you are. This is what you're doing. Right. This is your gimmick. Do it. Right. So that's a complete, complete lie. Yeah. Um, and then you have like Dale Bryan and Cena, who are interesting. Where Dale Bryan's almost like the, like the heel on the show, because he's dating the one <laughs> Bella, and I don't even know who the I can't even tell them apart. I honestly don't know who's <laughs> who. But the one that's dating Cena, she wants like to get uh, engaged to Cena. Right. So she implies like you got to give me like a, a present. She wants like a ring. So he doesn't get the ring. He drives up in a. Uh, like a big car, like an SUV. <laughs> he gives her like a, I forget what it's called, he gives her an SUV, and then Dale Bryan's talking to the two Bellas later on, and he's like, I don't know what kind of man gets you an SUV before you, uh, the ring, and he's being like all like behind. <laughs> it's like like his character is basically like, they think he's like an amazing boyfriend and shit, but in reality he's like he's conniving, conniving behind them. Behind yeah, them. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, it's just bizarre, it's just completely insane. Genius, of course. But what, I, what I got show. from this though, if you look at SummerSlam, it's Cena versus Daniel Bryan. All right. 
Right. And isn't it funny that this show came out show's about as a lead into SummerSlam, you know? That's what I was like, oh my god, they're on the show, they show clips like, oh, they're going to have a match, they're right. showing stuff from the past past Raws, uh, when Bale Brown was in his face, you know? So like, is this is this manipulating what's happening? And then I swear to God, like, the thing with the Funkadactyls at WrestleMania, it's supposed to be Funkadactyls, Brodus, Tensai, right. Damian Cody, and the Bellas. Right. I don't think that match was ever going to happen in the first think place. Was staged I think for they, this. I, I swear to God, I don't think the match was ever going to happen. I think huh. they lied to all of us we were going to have the match so they could do an angle on this program about How this. How they got bumped from WrestleMania. Huh. I'm pretty sure. Huh. About this. Interesting premise. Well. So that was it. I'll probably never watch it again. It's cause... interesting that the show even exists. I mean, like, what, what were they thinking with this thing? Well, yeah. uh, hopefully that's not the case and it's not directly affecting, you know, matches. Like, obviously everyone wanted to see the Daniel Bryan Cena match. So hopefully they did it because everyone wants to see it, not because they already had a plot line in this stupid show. You know yeah. what I mean? It would be a so, great reality show to like follow like a wrestler, what they do every day. Like that'd be kind of, This is this is not that. This no. is this is a totally scripted <laughs> like a no, no, no. no 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 that appeals to like the lowest common denominator of girls fighting with each other, being catty, and you know just disgusting behavior all around. So that's that's pretty much what it is. Ugh. And this company is oh PG company. You know, we're, we're all about non-bullying and all this garbage, and uh, this is what they want to promote and put out there. So. Right. There you go. Amazing. A show about gossip and, and freaking, you know, the worst, of, the worst of humanity on display. So coming up, just so everyone knows, because you might not realize this, but coming up in just two weeks, two weeks from tomorrow, is SummerSlam. Because we didn't even realize it before we, uh, before we started today. We were looking it up, and we were like, holy shit, only two weeks, really? So it's coming up fairly quickly, and so WWE is obviously doing what they can to push all their agendas and all their matches for this pay-per-view coming up. Um, so let's talk about the, the actual wrestling shows this week. We had Monday Night Raw. Opens up with uh, Daniel Bryan confronting Mr. McMahon in the ring. And uh, basically Mr. McMahon telling him he doesn't think he has what it takes. You know, basically kind of talking down to Daniel Bryan. Uh, Mr. McMahon says, Brian, you don't seem to understand that when John Cena told you that he picked you because he thinks that you're, like, good competition, he was lying. He's, you know, he's being insincere with you. He's patronizing you, basically. And, uh, and it makes Daniel Bryan think about it because he basically says, well, uh, Mr. McMahon's always been straight with me, so maybe he is telling the truth. Maybe Cena is being conniving and being a dick to me kind of, you know, backhandedly. Uh, the first match of the Daniel night... Daniel Bryan has to win or it's going to really... Make him look bad because like not, the, he's not gonna win. The whole the whole thing is like you're you, you know you say you're small and all that right. stuff. So he's like he has to win for it to make sense. He's not gonna win. I'll tell you right now, he's not gonna win. <laughs> he has to win. He's not gonna win the match. He has to win. I for want it. him to believe me. I want him to. He's not gonna win. He's not winning this. He's match. He's gotta win for it to to make sense. So you just beat him look really, really <laughs> stupid. Uh, the first match of the night is the Shield and a six man tag against Mark Henry and the Usos. So now, by the way, in the past few weeks, yes, Mark Henry has become an insanely strong face all of a sudden. Simply because he's going against the Shield, he's constantly teaming up with the Usos, who are now the top tag team in the in the division. Uh, they've been winning matches left and right, <clears throat> so they have this match. And uh, whoa, what the hell? <sighs> yeah, we got to talk about that. Randy Orton yeah, getting that. attacked. Um, yeah, the the, uh, the Shield does win the match. They find an opening during the match. They isolate Jay Uso. You know, they do like a triple team. They pin him. But then after the match, the Usos and Mark Henry attack the Shield again. So they're, they're, this is obviously going to be a match that's going to happen at SummerSlam. They're building up to it. It's either going to be like the Usos again for the tag belts, and then Mark Henry's there as an enforcer, or they'll have the six-man tag again. Something's going to happen at SummerSlam with this, obviously. It's building up to it. Um, RVD has a singles match with Fandango. Kind of deflating because you want to see, if, you know, what... Here's a veteran who you know this veteran can put over new talent because he's done it before, mm. but they completely squander it by having Fandango just walk out of the match and have it be a count out. Well, it's yeah, like, that may be something that keeps going on. It's kind of annoying. That may be something know? that continues. Um, Caitlin has a singles match with AJ Lee and actually beats her with a spear. Clean. Clean win. So everyone's like, holy shit, is Arts Caitlin coming back? And it's actually announced that because of her win over AJ, she's going to get a new Divas title match on SmackDown this week. Um, Dolph Ziggler and Biggie Langston have a, have their first singles match, and uh, it's actually a decent match. But during the match, unfortunately, AJ gets involved, which gets uh, Langston dis DQ'd, and then Ziggler takes advantage and uh, and does a zigzag to him. 
And so now it's like, uh-oh, so now is Biggie Langston angry at AJ just how Ziggler was angry at AJ? What's going to happen with that? It's kind of weird. We'll talk about how that develops on SmackDown because there's like a weird development that they announced that I didn't understand, but we'll talk about it when we get to it. All right. Um, Christian, this was a weird one. Christian versus Alberto Del Rio in a singles match, and Christian wins. Clean, too. Like, it's crazy. Like, it's a really good match, by the way. It reminds me of the old Christian matches they, where they actually let him, you know, show show his stuff off, and he did really well in this match. Del Rio, obviously, always, you know, he's been solid pretty much the whole past year. And uh, the whole the whole story here is that Christian's arm is injured. Del Rio's been attacking the arm the whole match, and finally, at the end of the match, he goes for the, the arm breaker, and Christian reverses it and rolls him into, like, a schoolboy and wins like that. And uh, so now... It's like, holy shit, Christian, you know, he's pinned the champion. What's going to happen? We'll just put him into the number one contender's uh, spot where we'll at least put him into the contention because it was actually announced that Alberto Del Rio is now also able to pick his opponent for SummerSlam because Vicky is the new GM of SmackDown. She's giving him that ability. I mean, uh, well, uh, well, I don't know. I don't even understand why Cena got to pick it. It makes no sense. I don't it makes no sense. It. It's really dumb. Uh, and now they're going to let Del Rio do Del it Rio too. Del Rio will pick as well. Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes now also become he's become a face, and the crowd's all cheering for him or whatever. Ever since his uh, his falling out with Damian Sandow over the Money in the Bank. After him and David Sandow broke up, <laughs> it was a, it was a rough it was breakup. A rough breakup. <laughs> yes, but uh, so he has a singles match with Wade Barrett, and uh, it's a good match again. Good match. These guys, uh, you know. Are basically they've gotten to the level where they know how to put each other over. You know what I mean? Like they've become mid level. They were like newbies. They're not like mid level guys. And it looks like either one may get a push at some point. But at this point, Cody goes over, uh, and uh, and wins the match. So he's getting building momentum. He's probably gonna have a match. Let's face it, he's gonna have a match with Sandow at some point. Probably yeah. SummerSlam. They just haven't announced it yet. Um, Safe bet. And then let's see here. The first main event of the night was Daniel Bryan against Kane. And uh, I'm trying to remember. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it was it was a good match. Kane pretty much is like beating up Daniel Bryan, but the Daniel Bryan ri- rallying back, and then it ends up where it looks like Kane's gonna choke slam him, but instead he reverses and he rolls him up into a small package and pins him, and then just runs out of the ring. And of course, Kane's furious because this is the first time we've seen Kane in several weeks since the Wyatts beat him up weeks ago, and. Uh, and so obviously, you know, people are like, you know, he wants his revenge. He's where are they? And it, this was this is what I didn't get. Um, fuck, what's his name? The GM, the GM of Raw. Now I keep forgetting his name. Eric Bischoff. Well, let's call him that. <laughs> All right, whatever. <laughs> he he told Kane. That's his name. He told Kane earlier in the night that the Whites weren't there. Yeah. But then the Whites show up and beat the shit out of him, and it's like, what the hell? Like you told him they weren't there. So they let his guard down, and then they come out and beat the shit out of him. Like, come on, man. I don't know. Something going on behind the scenes. <laughs> so, Kane gets beat up again by the Wyatts. Brad Maddox, by the way. Brad Maddox, yes. So, so something's going to obviously eventually happen with Kane and the Wyatts. Uh, Brie Bella defeats Natalia. Ties into the show. That's the whole point. It's just to promote the show. Let me get no to reason. that. <laughs> and apparently there was a nipple slip. Yeah, it was a, it was a I didn't see slip. it. I, I, I missed it, and then I deleted the show for my TV. It was just a nipple. Just calm down. Just calm down. Just a nipple? There's lots of nipples on the internet. It's not That's a, true. You could find many you nipples. You might be able to find my nipples on the internet if you, Whoa. Look, if you know where to look. You know what? <laughs> We're just going to move on. We're not going to address that. just a nipple, that. ladies and gentlemen. Uh, That'll be an episode of the show. <laughs> That'll be an episode of the show, like six months, when they get to that point in the, in the show. My nipple came out, I can't my believe it. My nipple came out on TV! Yeah. Oh no! Daniel Bryan, what do you think about this? Oh, John Cena's a dick. Because John Cena loosened your top before the match. <laughs> yeah. Here's footage of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Exactly. Um, Curtis Axel has a singles match with R-Truth. Who cares? Like, what the hell? Like, well, why Why is R-Truth... He's like the whipping boy now, seriously. Yeah. So, no one cares about that. And then, the main event. John Cena versus Ryback in a tables match. It's a decent match. I mean, it's what you expect from the two. Uh, at the end of the match, Cena reverses Ryback, gets him into the attitude adjustment, into table. So at least the end of the match wasn't like a wimpy crap, you know. Ryback's running for the corner and accidentally, you know, oh no, Cena moves. I hate when they do it like that. He's afraid of Cena all of a sudden out of nowhere and <laughs> hides under the ring or something. Yeah, no, Cena actually, you know, gets a legit, the legit win by putting him through the table. And then that prompts Daniel Bryan to come out and start doing yes, yes in John Cena's face. But they wrote Ryback in the results. 
They did? Yeah, look, far from the cryback. <laughs> cryback. They wrote cryback cry in the official results. They called them cryback in the results. Wow. Oh, no. All right. Um, so that's that. Now, it was important to note, this was a weird week because most of the shows were pre-taped. So, yeah. it was because they were doing, what is it, the South American tour? South, I forget oh, what they Oh, they were in, like, uh, South Africa. South Africa, that's right. China. Really. South Africa, China. Yeah, uh, they were in, running the guys to the ground, They're man. doing this crazy international tour, so all the shows were actually... They did one, too, like, uh, they were in Japan. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, first of all, all the results were known, which is unfortunate when that happens. Yeah. You know? But I don't spoil. I didn't spoil, so I didn't I know usually don't happen. either. I mean, uh... But the weirdest thing happened if you watched not to. if you watched all three shows this week, and what I mean is if you watched Raw, Main Event, and SmackDown, on Raw they said, "Well, JBL's not here. He's doing a good thing. He's doing his you know climb mountains for to raise money for kids, his charity. All right, that's awesome. That's a good thing JBL does." Then he's on commentary on Main Event on Wednesday. Like now you weren't here on Monday, you're back on Wednesday, but then he's not on commentary on SmackDown. They say he's off again. It's like. Couldn't you have, like, rearranged the shows or knowing that you were going to do that main event that week? Couldn't you have not had JBL on commentary? It was very weird that they did that. Um, so now let's talk about SmackDown results. Actually, before we get to SmackDown results, let's talk about what happened with Randy Orton. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because that happened in the middle of the week, kind of. Uh, so Randy Orton, an overseas tour, uh, has a match, wins the match. He's posing on the ring. Yeah, he's doing his usual pose. The pose. I can't really do it on camera here because I can't fit it. But he's doing the pose. Some idiot. And so an idiot comes up and punches him in the balls. Like it wasn't even like you gave him like the flare, the Ric Flair, the Ric Flair from behind, low blow from behind, right? Yeah. And I saw the video and it's it's funny because Orton like he sells it like uh, a wrestler would take that spot, you know? Right? Because he doesn't know. What's, I mean, would you know what's going on if someone did that from behind? Which is like, interesting that he would immediately just go into that like muscle memory. Like it's, yeah, it, it was interesting. It shows Bizarre. like it shows he's like you know. It shows something good about him, maybe. I don't know. He's, re- he's a veteran. He's restrained. He knew what to do. Know, he didn't have to attack the dude viciously. So he came down. He took it like... And then he's just looking at the guy. The guy's sitting there like... <laughs> and the security grabs him. They pull him out of the ring. Orton gets a, a good kick on the guy's head. Right. And uh, Orton just goes right back to posing again. So... I think a couple years ago when Orton was like younger and he was crazy and he had a bad reputation for doing all these things, he probably would have grabbed the guy and literally punched his Beat face Beat the shit in. out of him, yeah. But he'd give him a nice kick. Which this guy deserved, and he went right back to doing what he was doing. So he, he held himself well, back I think. Back to my pose. How dare you interrupt the pose. Well, the, the, guy's, a, the guy's a lunatic, and... Yeah, it, I guess he made statements. Idiot. He said, oh, I want to make a name for myself, and... What the hell? And, uh... Sadly, he did, though, because everyone's watching his, uh... His, you know, his YouTube or whatever. He's got didn't see it, but... That's pathetic. I heard people talking about it. He made, he made promo videos So and your stuff, life... But, your life is so lame. You have so little going for you in life that you're going to attend a pro wrestling show... And attack the wrestler. This yeah. is how you're going to make a name for yourself. He did. It's uh, unfortunately, I bet he'll, he'll fade away now into obscurity. But for that one moment, you know, people paid attention to him. But it really, it's a failure of security. You know, the security. There's no way yeah. anyone should ever get that far. Right. right. How did he? How did he jump the thing? It's completely ridiculous. Get in the ring and up to Orton before security. Yeah, it's yeah. really complete failure on their part. Notice so. what was going on. They're so. the ones that messed up more than anyone. Yeah. And he came in really. I don't know. The guy's an idiot. But he's obviously got something wrong with him. <laughs> I just don't understand these people. So, there you go. But I do. Before we talk about the SmackDown results, I do want to say on the WWE app, it's hilarious. We've talked about this before, but they quote tweets. And no, wait, no, it's not a work. You know, it's not staged. Is there... It was not a staged ball shot. <laughs> There's one idiot website that's reporting that. And oh my god! Again, if it has, it's got news and you spell news with a Z. It's not a good <laughs> website. You shouldn't be going because, to that website. John, when you're going to build up something, it's a, when it's a work. You should do it in an international tour that's not televised. That's yeah. the best way to do it. Yes. But anyway, uh, on the WWE app for iPad and for I, uh, the iPhone, uh, I think it's on Android too, actually. Yeah, it is. It's on everything right now. They, they quote tweets of people who say, like, pound hashtag SmackDown or yeah. hashtag Raw. Yeah. We see the funniest shit. Earlier today, this was like, I love these delicious pancakes with with pound raw blueberry juice oh, yeah, yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. It was like, well, then you the see f- like you see the sexual ones. The sexual ones. Yeah. No condom tonight. I was like, what was the one with that woman? Oh my god, that was so weird. No, I was like, no condom for me or something. She's like, it's time for for my first back door with no condom pound raw. I love it. <laughs> I'd like to thank everyone for making this possible. I was like, what the fuck? First of all, who thanks people for making sex without a condom in the ass possible? And it's so funny that it's on the app. We read it it's on the like WWE app. It's what? like, what the fuck? I mean, that's the thing. They think they, like, own the term raw, you know? Like, we own the word. <laughs> the weirdest shit. The weirdest shit. All right. So. What the? Here we go. 
Uh, so Vicky Guerrero, well, first of all, Vicky Guerrero had told Alberto Del Rio he had the ability to pick his opponent for SummerSlam, and just he probably, like... He picks Ricardo, probably. Yeah, right? well... Is that what happens? So, <laughs> just like Brad Maddox had on Raw with John Cena. So he comes out, oh, I'm going to pick my opponent, and it is, of course, you're right. The first thing he does, it's... it's uh, yes, because Ricardo John Rodriguez. Cena is so, you know, he's such a good person, he picks a vital challenger. Right. Ricardo, he's a disgusting heel... So he's going to do the opposite. Right, right, right. So he picks Ricardo Rodriguez. Of course, Vicky comes out. She says, what are you doing? No, you can't wrestle Ricardo. Obviously, it has to be a, a legit contender. He goes, all right, then I change it. I will wrestle the Brooklyn Brawler. And she's like, no. She's like, you have to understand I'm the new GM. You can't do this kind of stuff. So since you can't take it seriously, I'm going to set up for tonight a crazy triple threat match. It's going to be RVD <clears throat> against Christian against Randy Orton. And the winner of that match is going to be the number one contender for the title. All right, so that's pretty good. You know, okay, that's a good, good choice, good, good match for SmackDown. Um, singles match: Cody Rhodes against Jack Swagger, and uh, it's a quick match. I have to say that it's quick. It's not, I, w- I don't even want to say it's like a, a squash because it's really not. It's just a quick WWE match. It was just like a really quick, solid match, and. Uh, Rhodes got the win by countering a move and getting a pin. He didn't do the, the the crossroads or anything. He's got just similar to his win on Monday again. Like a quick, he outsmarted his opponent, rolls him up, gets the win, and uh, so he's backstage being interviewed by I think it's the chick, whoever the girl is, the new girl, the blonde that interviews uh, people. I have no idea. And then he gets attacked by by uh, by uh, oh my god, I can't stand down because we forgot to mention it's so stupid on Monday. Cody Rhodes threw the briefcase into the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> oh, they've done this multiple times before where they steal either just titles and stuff and they throw it into the Gulf of Mexico. Every time they're in th- down there, they throw something into the Gulf of Mexico. Seriously. Remember last time it was The Rock was throwing John Cena merchandise into the Gulf of Mexico? Oh, and uh, that, was, that was there? And yeah, I think so. Okay. And then it was like... Uh, no, I take that back. That was the Boston Tea Party. I take that yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what is it with WWE? They always got to throw shit into the bodies of water. Way, yeah, it started way back with the with the Rock, hundred years ago. Yeah. So anyway, so now Sandow attacks Cody Rhodes, gets his revenge. Obviously, again building something up for SummerSlam. Um, Biggie Langston in a singles match against Sin Cara. And if it's the freaking cases on the line, and Cody wins the case off him, then it's just don't do that. And what's man. the point? What was the point don't of the whole thing? Right. I guarantee you that's what's going to be too. Don't do that. Cody's going to win the case. I'm telling you, Cody's going to win it. Don't do that. Cody's going to win it. I do. I think Yeah, Cody's but he might lose it. to someone else. This might be like an ongoing thing. <laughs> the, the case is on the line. The case is a belt now. Ugh. All right. So anyway, Biggie Langston has a singles match against Sin Cara. No, we know who's going to win this. Sin Cara hasn't won a match in what? Six months? You oh, know? Oh, freaking year. <laughs> so, so it's funny because Sin Cara does his, uh, you know how he can springs off the ropes and tries to do like a moonsault? And Biggie just catches him and does his finisher. Uh, so it was kind of a quick match. It was kind of funny. Um, but the reason this is weird is, and this is what I'm going to mention about the relationship between AJ Lee and Big E, AJ wasn't out there for the match. And you're like, wow, why? I thought they were together where AJ doesn't come out for it. All right? And we're going to talk because actually later on they, they make an announcement about this. Uh, CM Punk has a singles match against Fandango. Now you might say, why is CM Punk wrestling Fandango? Well, it's because on Monday, on Raw, CM Punk came out to cut a promo against Brock Lesnar, but Fandango interrupted him. The reason he's fighting him because Brock Lesnar doesn't actually work for the company, and he's only there three times a year. Right. So they need something for CM Punk to do in between. Right. So he's fighting Fandango. So there you go. So, you know, Fandango came out on Monday, was doing his dance and everything, and he interrupted Punk. Punk got pissed off and attacked him, which set up this match on, on SmackDown. Uh, it's an okay match. It's not anything great. You know what I mean? Like, Fandango, I don't think, is at the level where he could put on a great match with someone like CM Punk yet. Uh, but the, the the finish is weird. It's, it's, it's a unique move. It's CM Punk puts him up for the superplex. He does the superplex, but as they're landing, he rotates and immediately turns it into the Anaconda device. So it's apparently some new way that he's invented to apply the vice. And I'm wondering if he's going to be using this in future matches or not. I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. Um, so, of course, Punk goes over. No no kidding. Of course, the best versus the beast at SummerSlam is what they're building up. Um, all right. Now, this is the weird match. This is what I, th- totally threw me off. AJ against Caitlyn for the Divas Championship. Before the match, there's a segment with Caitlyn and Layla, as usual, in the back talking. 
And Layla wishes Caitlyn good luck. She says, I, out of all the divas I've seen come through here since I've been here, you seem to be the most determined, and you have the most drive, and even though AJ, you know, screwed with you last month, here you are, right back at the top, and, you know, good luck out there, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, okay, obviously they're doing this for some reason. They're not, you know what I mean? Like, there's, mm. there's something behind this. So AJ comes out by herself. And you're like, wait a minute. What is going on between AJ and Biggie Langston? And the announcers say, there's been a ruling by WWE officials that they can not they can no longer come out with each other because they think it's too much of an advantage, especially AJ, to have Biggie Langston in her corner. It's too much of an advantage. So they've ruled out that, that, that Biggie can come out for her matches anymore. And I was like, but... You were teasing this whole plot line where maybe there was a romantic involvement, and they just like completely dropped it out of nowhere. It's oh. gone. They just dro- <clears throat> dropped it flat. So I don't know if maybe people were saying it's too much with AJ now, and now she's going out with B. Like, what the fuck's going on? Maybe someone, maybe Stephanie finally awoken her senses and said, we're going to stop doing this nonsense. I don't know. It's probably just they don't know where it's going to go, so they just don't do it. Yeah. They're like, where's this going to wind up? So they're just like, I end it now. I don't know. Really, really weird. So it, it just, they dropped it completely. Uh, so they're having this match, and uh, during the match, Caitlyn and AJ are on the outside of the ring, and it, basically it looks like Caitlyn's about to spear AJ through like the ring wall, uh, you know, the wall that the, the, for the fans, and all of a sudden Layla comes up and stops her. She says, "No, don't do it," and you're confused. You're like, why would she do that? And then all of a sudden, because she did that, AJ gets up and basically cheap shots Caitlyn, beats the crap out of her. Goes into the ring, immediately puts her in the Black Widow submission and wins the match. Then after the match, AJ and Layla hug each other and celebrate on the ramp. Like, they played it all along. Like, what the fuck was that? Like, where did that come from? Anti-bullying. It's all it is. Yeah, it's like anti-bullying campaign, yet they bully. Everything is bully, you know? Like, what the hell was that? Yeah. It was so fucking confusing, so shitty, man. So shitty. I just didn't understand the booking. I don't know. Time if you can't understand it. The person that wrote it doesn't understand it. <laughs> I don't know. All right, so then the, the 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 match that was actually a really good match. This is photos of the hot diva action. Which, do you want to see them? <laughs> no. Here, see some photos. That's what it John says. brought it up. I just thought it was funny. That's so how we're they look at photos of the hot diva they, action. Now. Yeah, it's it's people walking to the ring. See, there's the submission. There it is. Okay, there we Where's go. Where's Layla? There's Layla. See? What here she the is. Hell is this? She's the hot diva action right there. Here, here. This is the action. Here's the hot diva action. That's what that's the action. Right there. The person posing. That's what you need to see. Yes. Alright, there you go. Uh all right. all right. So I'm glad that oh, we did the, this. There's the nip slip right there. Where is Oh <laughs> They got a zoom. They zoomed in on it. Alright. So anyway, let's get out of here. Okay. So the, the the main event of the night was this triple threat match. Christian, R V D, Randy Orton, great match. Uh, all these guys, obviously, they're ring veterans. They know what they're doing. They know each other's styles. What I like when you see three ring veterans is that they, they usually integrate their styles together. So, for example, during the match, RVD goes for Rolling Thunder, but Orton knows Rolling Thunder, so he counters it with his patented power slam. You know, you've got the, everyone basically reversing each other's moves into their own moves. I love when that happens. I love when you get to see that kind of on-the-fly stuff. So, it goes, it's like constantly... like you see a good wrestling match. Yeah, I guess, that's basically, I guess, what I'm saying. I like when it's a good wrestling match. <laughs> yes. Um, so the, all three of them are all constantly going at each other. And what ends up happening is uh, all three of them are basically in the ring. RVD goes for uh, Orton. Orton hits him with the RKO. RVD sells the RKO the best I've seen it sold in years. All right? Probably since the last time he got hit with it 100 years ago. The way he does it, that it if, you're, if someone's doing an RKO to you, John, just think about it. They're wrenching your neck. Okay, so if you're really wrenching someone's neck, they should immediately just flatten out because you basically broke their neck, right? And that's how RVD sells it. He does the RKO and RVD flat like a pancake, he's done. Everyone else, when he does it, they bounce, they flip, they do these crazy wild, like, when he RKO's Dolph Ziggler, and Ziggler's like, whoa! They're like, what the, that's not what would happen. Well, as a Ziggler, Ziggler tends to, tends to, uh... He overacts everything. No, I'm just... He oversells it certain things. It's just like, I loved how RVD sold it. Because he sold it, yeah. but it looked realistic. Like, this is what would happen if you actually nailed someone with that move and it was a real move, all right? So then Christian turned... I'm sorry, uh... uh oh, he's from another era, that's why. You know, Orton, that's, oh, yeah. Today it's like, you gotta, you know, you overdo it, you have the expression of your face. 
Well, the, fe- you know, the facial expression. Oh, don't, do. don't get me started on Cena's facial expression. <laughs> we did enough of that last time. I wasn't time. even talking about him specifically, so, uh, sure. So, uh, Orton turns around, Christian's there, they do a series of, uh, of moves, and eventually Christian, I believe, gets him in a backslide pin. And, uh... And gets him, beats him. So now Christian is the number one contender. Did anyone suspect that Christian would win this match? I don't think so. Just a few weeks ago, we were talking about how Christian's been like the whipping boy since he came back. He seems to lose every match. And some people are kind of like saying, neener, 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 ha ha, Phil's been talking down to Christian, and he won. But all I have yeah, to say is this. Lose that. That's exactly what I was just going to say. All I have to win. say is this. He's not going to win. And she's not going to win the title at SummerSlam. The only yeah. reason they did this is because they couldn't give it to Orton because Orton is the money in the bank. He has to look strong. RVD just got back. They don't want to make him look bad by losing already. So they basically made the one person possible, the number one contender, who can lose and no one gives a shit. Yeah, he'll be, he'll be back to losing uh, very very soon and you'll right. forget all about it. But I also want to say, like, Ziggler, I think they kind of they kind of hurt him a little bit. Oh, yeah. It was hot that he was in the angle. They pull him out of the the picture. He's gone. With no explanation. And, and now they're gonna put him. They're gonna put him back into it a few months from now. Whatever it is. Yeah. And it's not gonna be. He's not gonna be as over as he was. And they're gonna, oh, we're not over anymore. So right. You're not gonna win, and you're go back to jobbing or whatever. So and they put him in a program with Big E, who no one cares about really. So I'm trying to get the impact results. Looking for the nip slip. Impact results. Looking August. for the nip, looking for the nip uh, pictures. One. Is that what's going on? Not looking for nipple pictures, John. I think you're right. So we're gonna do what we're we looking for TNA. Yeah, because I know there was some good stuff to happen this week. All right, we'll talk about TNA. Uh, what I said earlier was it's a perfect example of what the company pretty much is. Here it is. It's uh, because you look at the show; it's a microchasm of the company. When you have really good stuff on the show, it's overshadowed by bizarre, bizarre backstage weird stuff. skits. Yeah. That are terribly acted and done, right? And um, and a finish that you know a, re- a reveal that shows you know how out of touch they are with the with the audience and what's going on in the world around them. The thing yeah. that got me was so weird. Like they opened the show saying, "Oh, someone someone's debuting tonight." They've been sending videos to the office. It's been the talk of TNA all week. Yet when you actually look at it, no one knew about this, so no one was really. Talking about well, this, some like, people, some people were into it. Well, who knew? I didn't know it wasn't on. It wasn't on last week, so who knew what was going it was on? A, it was a, you know, the I don't know. It was, a, it was suppo- not viral. I don't know what the term is. An internet oh thing. My God. Some people knew about it. All right, um, they're, they're pushing in the promotion of the show. But um, okay, it's sad because it's like there's stuff about the show I really enjoy, and quite frankly, like, I'd rather watch a company that has you know Chris Sabin as the champion. And, and uh, undercard with Austin Aries and AJ and Bobby Roode and James Storm in it over like a, a Cena, a, basically a show about Cena, where even if he does lose to Daniel Bryan, he'll still be the champion and probably main event the shows, just like what happened with CM Punk was the champion, where he really wasn't the champion. Right, right. And Cena was. Right. You know, and uh, a, a show that doesn't have the McMahons on it and Triple H. Like, that's, that's appealing to me. And it's got really good stuff on it. <laughs> and it had a great match on the show. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, they're just so. Insane. They're 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 dumb, <laughs> and they they screw themselves. So. Right. So let's let's talk about it. First of yeah. all, the theme of the night was the fans had voted for certain matches, and so you're giving the fans what they want. So there are two dream matches. You got Austin Aries against AJ Styles in a Bound for Glory series match. Yes. And you've actually got the new TNA World Heavyweight Champion Chris Sabin against Manic, the new X Division Champion. He actually won the X Division Championship last week. When we had a bye week, so we didn't really talk about that. Um, and there was a good promo at the beginning where Austin Aries came out and he was talking about how they were going to have this dream match, and it's the best, you know, the best man who ever lived against the guy who held the company on his shoulders for ten years, which prompted Bobby Roode to come out and he says, "Well, wait a minute, I held the, the, the company on my shoulders too, and I, you know, just because I'm on a losing streak doesn't mean that you guys can forget about me. I think it's I'm going to go back to my roots, and I, well, I think he used his tagline from when he started with the company. He used all his all of his phrases. Yeah, Good factor. The leader of the, the selfish uh, generation. Yeah, the selfish generation. It's like every possible one he ever had. He used the, the other one. It's good to be rude or yeah, something yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you use it. So you're like, okay, maybe there's going to be some cool throwbacks tonight. And so the first match of the night was Rude versus Hernandez. And incidentally, yeah, he's back to his old cheating ways. Basically, he goes under the ring, grabs a beer bottle, smashes Hernandez in the head it's with just, it to uh, win. Which is dumb because how did the ref not fucking see the glass all in well, the ring? Well, not only that, I mean, and that's not even his angle. That's when he was in beer money. That's not his thing. Well, so. I get the no. It's a throwback to when he when he won the title and he used the bottle. So right. It was, like, it was like symbolism. 
I get that, but like the ref, the ref has back there and he hits him with the bottle. So there's glass all over the ring. The ref doesn't give a shit that there's glass, and he's counting one, two, three. <laughs> his hand, you would see, is hitting the glass. The glass, it's like oh, oh. no, it's fake. Well, it's obviously <laughs> fake glass. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't hurt, or whatever. But just so stupid, Ugh. you know, just completely stupid. At least you could have hit him with the bottle outside the ring, you know. And again, these are two. These are two guys. The match was decent. These are two guys that are really good that I'd like to see uh, have matches. Just bad booking. But then in the end, it's like the ref right. doesn't care. Just broken glass, and he counts in glass, <laughs> sitting in glass, and counting in glass. Uh, Joseph Park, who is at negative ten points in the Bound for Glory yes. series, because he, two times in a row now he turns into abyss. He turns he, into abyss when he bleeds, and then he gets a squall. <laughs> so Eric Young. Basically has an idea for him. He gives him headgear to wear in this match versus uh, Jay Bradley. Yeah. So, you know, they're doing their typical stuff. It's weird because Joseph Park still hits a couple moves that are abyss moves, and you're like, why did they do this in the first place? Why can't he just be abyss? Uh, so it end, the, the match ends where Joseph Park does actually win clean. And uh, so he gets seven points, so now he's only negative three points in the Bomb for Glory series. <laughs> He'll not be winning. Uh... The main event mafia say they're going to make an offer that they can't refuse to the aces and eights at the end of the night. They also talk about how there's going to be a match, um, Christopher Daniels against Kazarian. Yeah, next week. Next week, and that's going to be a Bound for Glory series match. That could be interesting. All right, so then we got Chris Saban against Manic, uh, which, by the way, now that I'm seeing the spelling of Manic for the first time, I am disgusted. <laughs> well, let's talk about Manic for a little. What the fuck? Manic man? is such a weird thing because, like, they they last week I don't know if you saw, but they. He always TJ Perkins is the dude in the suit. Yes. And all the video packages were about TJ and showing him, like, you know, um, his, his history. He's been around for a long time, 10-plus years in wrestling. Right. Uh, he never <clears> had, like, a lot of opportunities on a big stage. But, uh, but then, like, why is he manic, though, if he's this other guy? But then this week they tried to explain it a little bit. There's a promo with him with his back turned. He's holding the mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's going, well, I was never, as TJ, I was no one, but this, this made me someone. I don't know. It still doesn't really make a lot of sense. <laughs> Like, if, if he's going to be the guy in the costume, like, it's better when they didn't know who anything yeah, bad about Yeah, why'd you reveal it? Right. right. So, yeah, but I like the match. It was, it was a fun match. It was a good match. You know, these two guys are good workers. They're fast. They're quick. They're small. Well, that's that's why, you know, they can do these crazy spots. And this is the kind of matches you could have in the X Division again if you stop the three ways. Right. The three ways suck. Like, go right. back to this. This was a lot better than any of the three ways they've had recently. And again, it was a good match. This is what TNA is, you know, what TNA could be at their best. They have matches like this, which Dorit doesn't really do. Right. Dorit is like, you know, you know, keep my numbers type matches. Right, right, right. Well, then, like, you have a good match, and then they follow this up with a bunch of weird segments. You have Taz. He's not allowed in the building. Taz is not allowed why? in the building. Well, if you, if you could keep him out, why couldn't you keep the Aces and Eights out <laughs> for all this time, you know? And uh, then that also doesn't make sense, because Aces and Eights won the right to come in, so why can't he, isn't he allowed in? He's banned for some reason. I don't understand it makes why. Less sense. Uh, there's a, then there's one where Brooke Hogan goes right into the Aces and Eights uh, area. Right. And she's not afraid of them. Right, right, right. She goes, walks right in, talking to Bully. What the fuck? I don't know. Bad booking, bad segments. Yeah, um, bad. We should segments. mention, Chris Sabin does win the match with Manic. Yeah, yeah. And it's a good match, because Manic looks good. It looks like he took the champion to the limit. But Chris Saban still looks strong because he won the match. So that, obviously, the booking there was good. Um, Gail Kim has a singles match with ODB after their, I guess, their flare-up last week where I guess Gail's tired of ODB being the ref. Again, that's good, too. Like, I like the knockouts are great. Uh, I look forward to a lot of the matches. They, they go all out. They, they do brutal stuff. Yeah, well, I didn't look forward to the double count-out ending. That was kind of no, shit. No, that wasn't it. But they were, they, were, they were hitting each other hard, and it was, you know... They do more than the Divas do. Right. Uh, there's no count on any, but that's what they do on Raw too, because it's just it's just gonna lead to more matches. Right. The segments like you mentioned with Brooke Hogan, blah yeah, blah yeah, blah. Yeah, Who cares yeah. about that? Yeah. Uh, she walks right into the club. Right the into the club house. <laughs> so it's been it's being teased all night that this new someone's sh debuting tonight, August first. Taz is out in the parking lot. There's this stretch. What is it? Hummer? Stretch Hummer? Yeah. And he's like, I gotta see what's going on. I'm gonna blow the lid off all this. And he opens the door. Door's not locked because as you know, when you rent a stretch Hummer, you don't lock the doors. Opens the door. There's a laptop inside playing the promo video for whoever this guy's gonna be. And he laughs. He's like, this is it? This is what everyone's so ha so fucking hyped about? Look at this. And it's a laptop. It's so stupid. The um, whole thing was the whole thing was bad. The whole thing was very bad. I done. swear to God, I'll tell you this right now. <laughs> if you gave me like an hour, an hour and a half, I could make a better video than the one they made for this reveal. It was like, <laughs> what the hell was that? It was just terrible. It was a silhouette with fucking... It was the story. I can make you a better that reveal... Uh, a better, like, pro promo video than that. Give me an hour and a half. I could do it. Alright, let's, let's continue with this. Alright, and then the main event of the night, 
Austin Aries versus AJ Styles, a BFG Series match. All right. Um, uh, that was great. It was a really good match. Again, they do, they're doing stuff. There's there's a dragon suplex. They're they're doing, they're doing stuff that you would never see on WWE. I like stuff. how AJ he still does some of his old stuff, but then he has a whole new move set that he uses too. Yeah, he, he usually does it, but when he pulls something out, like he did the Pele, it's like right. oh shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I mean. Like it was good. I like the AJ character too. I like the promo before this. Uh, that, that he did. I like the whole presentation of the character. Right. Um, I don't know, it's kind of murky right now. You don't really know where it's leading because you thought maybe he'd, he'd lead to his redemption and, and he would go to you know, be the savior of the company and stuff like that. But now he's going into like where he, he's saying like he wants to make money and things. He's doing things for money and it's like it's very heelish in, at the same time. Uh, but the match was really, really good. Excellent <clears throat> stuff. You know, and then we followed up again. You have something good and you follow with something terrible which happened after this. <laughs> you know? All Austin right. Aries won the match, by the way. They both they oh, both yeah, went yeah, yeah. down. Yeah, they were both down. It was a double pin, but Aries was able to get up at the last second. Right, at the last second. Yeah. So, I was I like how they sold it. What you got it? Really, you did? And that's a match you could do three, four times, and people will, will watch every. They'll time. like to see the re yeah. right the rematches. So the main the the other main event, even though the real main event was that match, the other main event of the night was the Aces and Eights and uh, main event Mafia confrontation. And so basically, the offer that they can't refuse is that in two weeks, they're going to have Hardcore Justice, which isn't a real pay-per-view, I guess. It's still on Impact. Mm -hmm. But they're going once to... Once a month, they're going to do these, like, you know, the, the special TV impact. The special impact once yeah, a month. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's, they, they propose a five-man tag match where Aces and Aids get to pick five. Obviously, the main event mafia have their side. And whoever gets pinned in the match has to leave the company. All right? So you wonder who that's going to be. And so it's confirmed, like the big of the big announcement is that it's confirmed that Rampage Jackson's actually gonna wrestle in two weeks. We've actually heard that behind the scenes he is seriously training to try to do it. It look too good because you like when, every time they have those skirmishes with him, I always focus on him when I watch. Right. And like this time was at, at the skirmish with this was him and Devon. And Devon was hitting him and they were just hitting each other and, and Rampage was like no selling no it. No selling anything. Because he probably doesn't get I don't know, he was just standing there going like this. <laughs> and he was just no selling Devon's punches. I don't know. So, that's like, oh, big announcement. He's going to wrestle in two weeks. All of a sudden, the lights go out. Yeah. The lights come back on. And Randy Couture is on the... No, I'm just Hope kidding. next. It was Tito Ortiz. Iceman, who's coming next? Yeah, Iceman, Chuck Liddell. All, whoever was, like, huge, like, ten years ago. <laughs> so, uh... Yeah, Royce Gracie. So, uh... <laughs> he, he stayed away from it. He stayed away from it. I yeah, think. A lot did. of the other guys did it. Uh, so it is Tito Don't Ortiz. Fly. Tito Ortiz is on the ramp. Now, it makes no sense for multiple reasons. Number one, Tito Ortiz and Rampage Jackson are going to fight in Bellator MMA. It's already been announced. Yeah, the, I think it's the first uh, Bellator pay-per-view that's going to be the main event. So so it's pretty much like Spike TV going, we want these guys on your show because you get right. you get a you know, million and a half, whatever. Pretty viewers. good ratings, right. Bellator doesn't. We're trying to build up Bellator. So have these guys on. And I think that's pretty much what, what it was. Right. But the, the problem is, I was telling you before, like is the way TNA presents it. And they made their entire company look like garbage. Because you have the Aces and Eights, you have the Mean of the Mafia. The Mean of the Mafia is like Sting, Kurt Angle... Guys right. that are like you know, veterans, all time greats, big veterans, and the then you got this guy who's basically no one in their universe come out, and they're like they're acting like they shit their pants, and the way that they cut, they would cut to Tito, cut to the, these other their faces, <gasps> you know, I, oh my god, it's him, he's gonna beat the shit out of me, he's a lot tougher <laughs> than, than us fake wrestlers. He has sex with a porn star on a daily basis. This real MMA what the hell? dude, he's a lot better than our, us fake our, our fake guys, you know. It was that's how they came across, you know. Right. It was really terrible. So, <laughs> like, it is what it is. It like, seems like, God. unfortunately, Spike TV may be forcing TNA to be bringing in all these MMA guys now. Which, I don't know how I feel about that. Obviously, you want oh, wrestling to bad. be wrestling. You don't want all these guys to get involved. Even if you like him, like, this is the part where this is what I was saying. Like, they're out of touch with, like, the universe. Because, like, even MMA people don't care. Right. You know, like, even They don't care that they're pro wrestling. Of, even fans of MMA don't care about Rampage and Tito showing up there. You know, it's, it's even when Brock Lesnar, who was still relevant... In MMA, he goes to WWE. They don't, they don't go watch that. Then. Right. You know, right. didn't really bump them that much. I think the first Extreme Rules got a little bit of a bump, and after that, it doesn't matter anymore. You know, since so it doesn't accomplish anything, all you're doing is paying Tito, you're giving him a free paycheck, right? As, and making your company look bad, right? That's right. all it is. That's all you're doing. Uh, That's it. So now, it begs the question: If you remember a few years back, uh, they basically TNA brought in every single person who was out of WWE. It was like in a row. It was like 
Christian, Jeff Hardy, Ric Flair, Booker T, Kevin Nash. You know what I mean? Like it was back to back to back to back. Are they going to be doing this with MMA now? Every every two months, are you going to see a new MMA guy walks in, and then all of a sudden there's a you know what I mean? And is that is that how does that dilute everything? It's bad. I did not like it. I was actually pleased that I missed it because my DVR cut off, and I had to read the result online. I when I read it, I groaned. I was like, I'm glad I did not see that because I probably would have been so. At least the only the only good like I don't know. The, uh, there's no good side to it, but at least they didn't like push huh. it huge. Like you said, a lot of people didn't know. Right. So it wasn't like they took like three months to do this because that right, would be right, even right. worse. Right. A three month build up just for it to be um, Tito Ortiz. Like, and oh. probably he won't be around long because I think, like, honestly, it's because of that Spike thing. Spike has a like, huge stake in TNA. Like people don't realize that. Like they have a, a big, uh, they're a big part of like they funnel money to them. They have right. big control over it. After it's done, he's probably not gonna be around. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. There's, it's it's really stupid. It's pretty dumb, and well, uh, it's like you know, it's like that's funny because you see people even there, like people are ripping ripping TNA. It's like people, these people don't even watch or never watched it. You know, it's like it's funny because they do something bad, everyone goes crazy on them. <laughs> but when they're really good, they have been really good. They were better than WWE for for several uh, weeks, if not months, at a time uh, over the course of like you know the last year. Those people aren't saying this is really good, and all of a sudden they come out of the woodwork and go, "Oh, this is sh look at this shit," you know. So whatever, don't be don't be marks, you know. I don't know. So, all right. So, this coming week, we got another week of build up for SummerSlam. We've got now kind of leading into Hardcore Justice. Isn't it funny too that it seems like these special events for TNA are always lining up the same week as the the, the uh, WWE pay per views now? Because they are. They're going to be the same week again. And uh, I wonder if they're going to continue that trend where they try to have their pre pay per view on Thursday. It doesn't matter because people aren't going to really watch. People won't, people don't watch. There's, there's a lot. Of, most people won't watch TNA no matter what they do. You, you got to realize, like, even true. if it's really freaking good, people won't watch it. They're like the redheaded stepchild of the wrestling so world. They so they try, they try certain, huh. they try things to do. I think they try the wrong things, which in the end hurts the worse. Right. But it does, it doesn't really matter in the end because people just won't watch it. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's, that's, that's the sad thing. But true. All right, Look, so that's uh, that's pretty much it. W WWE has taught you has taught a whole generation of people for like the last ten years, and they've been bad for ten years, really. Oh yeah. But they've they've taught people that they're that's what wrestling is. That's only wrestling that matters, and people people play into that, and buy into that shit. Yep, they won't and won't give anything else a chance. That's yeah. it. You're that's right. The end of it. All right, so that's it for this week's edition of Smart Guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, next week we will return with another episode. Um, so thanks again, whether you're watching on Twitch TV or you're watching on YouTube. Thank you for joining us. Next week we'll have all the news for the, the new developments leading up into the, the next uh, pay-per-view events. And in two weeks' time is the SummerSlam pay-per-view, and therefore we will be simulating the SummerSlam pay-per-view in WWE 13 for those interested. But I want to tease that. Two weeks' time. So not next week, the week after. Pay-per-view sims are coming. Okay? All right. That's it. Thanks a lot, everyone. Peace out. See you next time.